Hey guys, Mondo here. We are headed to a new project today. In my little shotgun pilot row. Um, I got the skidster on the truck. Kevin the Kubota. Jay's got uh, some wire mark on the trailer and uh, the tamper, thumper. And we are heading to Richland, New York. And we have to prep a bull barn. It's a 24 by 32, I believe, bull barn. We gotta put some gravel down. Uh, I think he's got some run across, crushed up limestone there. We're gonna put some of that down and tamp it, um, get it all ready for concrete. And then uh, there's an apron on it as well. We gotta form the apron up. And that's what we're up to this morning. Hey, Ro. Ro's a little whiny today. What are you whining about, Bob? It's actually a beautiful day today. We're in uh, mid-April here, central New York. And uh, it's gonna be probably 50 degrees today. So this is nice. And uh, we'll get some video footage for you guys. Stay tuned. Okay guys, we're gonna unload Kevin the Kubota. This is the project. Look at that, uh, 24 wide this way, 32 deep. Little pole barn. Had it built um, in the fall of last year, I guess. Nice little pole barn. So this is what it is. We're going to put concrete up to the top of the form board there. That's how they built it. And he's going to have a... We're going to put a bulkhead here to stop the concrete. But out here he wants an apron. So we want to form up a four foot out this way from the building by the width of the building. So we got this uh, crushed limestone here. This is really good stuff. It's got fine in it. You can see the fines in it. This stuff packs like crazy. There's no dirt or nothing in it. It's just limestone crushed right up. And that's what's down here already. That's kind of the, an expensive product, so we don't use it a lot. But um, some places it's more available, depending on where you're at. Um, must be that's what you could get, because the homeowner bought that. So that's good stuff, though. It's easy to work with. So here it is guys, we're just gonna get this prepped up. We're looking for five and a half inches thick on the concrete inside of here. We're gonna put wire mesh um, and poly down, vapor barrier, six mil vapor barrier. We're going to um, pour it flat to the edge of this door across. So this section here will be flat and then we're gonna pitch it a little bit this way. So that's the game plan. That's what he wants, he wants a slight pitch to the front door, so I won't be able to do much, though. I won't be able to give them much of a pitch because of the way the man doors and stuff are. But we can give them a little bit out that front door. So that's the game plan. Stay tuned, we're just unloading Kevin the Kubota. Get Ro out of the truck, he can hang out. I'll tie him up maybe over to this picnic table so he's out of the way. Chris and Jason are, uh, Unloading this cabin. I'm ready to rip here. I'm just gonna park up here in the hill so I'm not in the way. You ready, mister? You ready to go? You ready to go to work there, kiddo? You gonna behave? No more whining. No more whining. Behave. Okay, let's get you unloaded. Stay. Stay, okay?
tamp the building before we start putting the new limestone in. Just because uh, even though it's sat all winter, we want to make sure it's not going to settle around the poles or something. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to get old thumper in there and uh, just tamp it real quick. Make sure, see how it settles. If it hopefully it don't settle at all. That's the game plan, boys and girls. I don't know if it'll roll like that too good. Oh yeah, look at that. Old thumper. That thing weighs almost 600 pounds. It's a beast, but it really works good. Grab some other lumber too. Grab that piece of lumber right there. Jay, grab that stick of lumber right there, will you? Good thing I was paying attention to that, huh? So we just added uh, a couple inches, guys tamped it, um, Chris is checking, it's all still low, so we're going to come in and do another lift, but we like to tamp it down in lifts, what's it all, like an inch low at least? Yeah, well I just set to five and a half, yeah, or five, so oh five, down. okay, I got it, if you get it to this and tamp it again, we should be really good, yep, Thumper. I got the skid steer. I'm gonna get some more material in here. Let it rip. Stone won't wash out from under the concrete. 
before he puts his uh, apron or whatever on this side. So that's the game plan. We're gonna pour the, we're not gonna pinch the floor either, I called him. Um, his doors are all built to a certain height. And uh, if we pitch the floor, it's gonna mess things up for him because of his uh, metal's right where the concrete's gonna be here at the skirt board. So um, we're just gonna pour it flat. But we probably ought to put an apron on both these doors just because uh, the amount of concrete that we're gonna need here. There's where we're at, guys. Chris is just double checking. Looking for five and a half inches here. We are all ready to go. We just got to put our poly down today. Got the edges nice and thick. As you can see, I'm going to put a little limestone on the outside of there with the skidster to hold that back. We dug these doorways down. So they're probably eight and a half inches thick right there. That one's a good eight and a half inches too, nine inches thick. Poly wire mesh, a little stone here. I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. What time is it? 12.30, we're done over here. We didn't start this till what, 9.30? About three hours. We're all done, we just off the outside, spread it all out. Wires down, polys down, six mil, ready for concrete. And put a little stone up against this edge. Everything's picked up. We got some lumber over here. He does want an apron, but we're not gonna do that tomorrow because of the rain. Plus we don't like to connect the apron through here. So you have to stuff a expansion board or something in there. So we'll pour the apron another day. We'll get this poured out tomorrow piece of cake 24 by 32 we'll get it knocked out and i'll get you some video footage of it catch you in the morning girl what you doing bobber it's like 75 out today guys we just left the richland job um we are headed to my property in redfield i actually bought a piece of property in Redfield, New York last year in the fall and I'm going to put a little camp in there. I got like this shed that I'm converting into a camp. Um, I'll show you the property when we get there. It's a really nice piece of property. It's an area that we uh, snowmobile in and we ride uh, side by side. There's a reservoir there um, just down the street from my property. So I'll show you what it looks like when we get there. We've been clearing it for, I've been I've been over there clearing it on my weekends. That's what I do for fun. I work on the weekends, clearing land. Great roll. Always been game with me to help. But that's what I'm doing. I'll show you, I got a huge, <coughs> excuse me, I got a huge brush pile over there um, that needs to be burned up once the burn van is lifted. We can burn it, but we, we have a burn van right now, so. It's huge, this brush pile, wait till you see it. I'll show you, I'm almost there. I'll show you what it looks like. All right guys, just pulling up to my property now. That's about where it starts, right in here. Oh, Ro's excited because he knows we're at camp. That's the, it's three and a half acres. That's where I bought it from. But it, we're getting it cleared off pretty good. I already took a bunch of firewood out of here, but look at that brush pile. I'll show you a little better when I get out of here. And there's a nice uh, water feature here too. Bro likes the water. He likes to get in the water and play, don't you buddy? Alarm! Wait, you're not gonna jump out the window, crazy man. I know, you're excited, aren't you? You are at camp, huh? We're at camp, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have some fun, huh? Dog is ready. Get back! Get back, crazy. I'm gonna unlock the door here. Come on, wild man. Say how the road, row. 
Okay, come on, Let's have some fun. Dad's gotta get the excavator going, come on. This is the property, guys. As you can see, I've been clearing. This is that pile of brush, it's huge. You can hear the water running, if you listen. Hear that, that's the creek running. It's looking nice. Hey mister, what are you doing over there? You marking your territory? Crazy man. Let's just look at this. And I still got a bunch more trees to cut. That's all from the Yanmar mini excavator. If you guys are interested in this property let me know in the comments i'll keep videoing what we're doing over here if it interests you something different than concrete but i'll show you uh the creek here in a minute it's really nice right row okay guys this is what the creek looks like pretty awesome It's a relaxing sound, let me tell you. I'm go, Dad. You ready? You ready to go? We're gonna pour some concrete. We're gonna pour some concrete. There he goes. Come on, buddy. You gotta get in the truck. Let's go. Come on, Rob. Come on, Bob. Get in the truck. Come on, crazy man. Come on. You gotta go. Let's go. We gotta get loaded up. Come on. I know you're excited. Let's go. You gotta get in the truck. We're gonna pour some concrete today, aren't we? Let's do it. Get in there. You ready to go? You ready to go? You ready to go, buddy? Sit down. Sit down. Getting close, bro. Here's the job, buddy. Here's the job. Right there. Alrighty. I'll have to back down in. I think I'm gonna pull on this side of it. Back, oh, I'll probably back down in there. There's the big barn we're gonna do, bro. You ready, buddy? You ready to work? Let's get down in there, Bob. Let's get down in there. Okay. There's the big job, right, Ro? Looks like I'm the first one here. I like these little barns. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We'll tie Ro up over here. We are hanging some poly in here, guys. And uh, supposed to rain today, so. We're gonna put this poly up and then we can just droop it over these doorways. But we're gonna fold it up so we got a little bit of light in here. So let's hang it up, you know what I mean? So we got light. Gotta improvise sometimes so we can work on rain days. Otherwise we'd never get all the work done that we need to do. We do so much concrete every season. We have to, uh, like I said, we have to improvise, come up with uh, strategies. We're gonna have to pour this apron on a different day. That's the only problem with this job. He wants a four foot apron out there, so. We'll get her done though. How's that? Let me get his shoot in there. Yeah, I think so. I think that's gonna work. I think it's gonna work. We got the gopher today on the job. <laughs> Looking good, gopher. Thank you. We got Chris, Mike's just pulling in. Big Biscuit and me. We got Rowan, he's out there, yep. That looks good. 
like it. I'm getting a little jealous here because Biscuit's truck is cooler than mine. He's got this nice step on it that comes out. What'd it's you say? It's not a step, though. It's not a step. It says no step right here. It's, it's a seat for when you break down. <laughs> if you're riding a Ford and you break down. <laughs> Picking on the Fords and we got two Fords. Dog tie your dog up. Oh, yeah, you got your dog tie and you got your stuff. That thing's sweet. If it's biscuit proof, it ought to be tough. That's cool. We're just waiting on mud, guys. We got some lights in there, so the video footage will be a little better. Bro sounds a little mad at us this morning. I got him tied up over there. Hi, Ro. 8.31. Here it comes. <laughs> Yeehaw, there's our first truck. Looks like RJ. RJ slithering in here. Hmm. Oh, no. You don't want Black Betty? No. Go, Black Betty. Lamb to lamb. Go, Black Betty. I better get my boots on. The mud's here. We got 4,000 pound concrete today, guys, with 1% uh, accelerant in it. And we're just gonna wheel it in the back there. We got our Brentwood wheelbarrows. We got wire mesh for reinforcement. We're gonna pull that with our potato rakes. And that's how we're gonna do it. We want a lot of five, buddy. Five. Circle T, baby. There they are. There's their uh, credentials. Best concrete around here, Central New York. We are up in Richland today, as I probably already said that in the video. RJ asked where I've been. What's that? RJ asked where I've been. I said you guys don't like me anymore. <laughs> He's been on a diet. Look at how slim he is. Working all winter. Doing carpentry work. Trimmed him right down this winter. Hmm. All right, guys, stay with us. Putting all the shoots on we can, because once we get that back wheeled, we will just uh, shoot it. The RJ will just keep. There's two trucks today. It's uh, 14 and a, 13 and a half, or I can't remember if it's 13 and a half or 14 and a half yards. But we got two trucks anyways. There should be a half a yard more on this first truck. Yeah, I think we went seven on the first truck, six and a half on the second truck. So that's the way we're doing it. We got about a half hour between trucks. That'll give us time to uh, get this first truck in and get him out of here, hopefully, because there really ain't nowhere to park here. We'll have to wait up on the road. Stay tuned. Got about a foot and a half, buddy. That's good. Right there. That poly's a little bit. Eh. Might want to take a take a shoot off of there. You'll have better luck. We'll, we can put that on after. You'll have better luck getting that to slide down. Drop that down a little, RJ. Pull it, and it'll come off. Pull it, this. All right, that'll flow better. Otherwise, we'd have a heck of a time. All right, guys. We'll wheel probably to the middle of that doorway. That's the way we're gonna do it. We wanna start in that back corner right there, I'd say. That's where we're gonna bring the machine in. Chris is checking our height with the laser stick. Laser's over there on our bracket that we made. This is a nice bracket if you ever, you can make it out of metal, it made it out of aluminum, or you could use wood, but then you don't have to uh, have a tripod. Oh, that looks like some nice mud right there. I kind of like that. You like it? Doesn't look too terrible. I kind of like it. Let's see what it does. Yeah, let's see what it feels like. That looks pretty good, bud. Does it have one percent in it? 
It's got 1% in it, yeah. 1% accelerant. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's nice right there. We don't pour really soupy, wet concrete, guys. We pour good concrete. Yes, we pulled the wire up, see? See the wire, guys? Still up, still up. Because we pour it a little bit stiff. If you poured that concrete like an eight slump, the wire wouldn't stay up very good. I don't think, but we don't we don't touch that theory. We never pour an eight slump. Nice, nice. It's a little stiff, but I don't know. Probably make our day better at the end, huh? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It's about a five, though, wouldn't you say, Chris? About a five. Four and three quarters. Four and three quarters. Yeah, yeah we're pouring a four and three quarters. Four and five eighths today. <laughs> that was a load, Biscuit. Who needs a power buggy when you got a power biscuit and a power gopher? Right, boys? Power buggy. Who the hell needs that? Right behind you. Woo! Oh, nice dump, dude. Nice dump. Only time we really use a power buggy is if we got to go a long ways with the concrete. We're just moving it from here to here. You definitely don't want a power buggy. It just moves the wire all over the place. It's a pain in the neck. That's how much concrete you can put in the old Brentwood right there. Dump it right in there, nice. See how far we've already been? Does not take long at all. Yeah. You want to fill the whole back first? This is 24 wide? This is 24 by 32. That was something. We'll get that whole back wall done and then we'll run a wet screed up the middle. That's the way we're going to do it. I'm going to put this on a tripod so I can actually help the guys. You get any idea what we're doing now? Okay, wire watchers. That's our potato rake that we pull up with. There's our wire mats. Watch. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Ready? I'm gonna show you how. I'll show you where the wire mesh is. After I just stepped on it. There it is. Look. We got that much material under it. Okay. That is, I'll show you. That much. Again. Ooh. Walk on it again. Wire's right there. Check it again. Ah. 
Right in the bottom where we want it. Up about, I don't know, what's that? How much is that, guys? Let's see. That is, I want to say two and a half inches off the bottom. And our floor is five and a half inches. So that's right where we want it. We want it on the tension side. So when you put pressure on this slab from up here, you put pressure on the slab, it'll when it cracks like this, the wire will be on the bottom for the tension. For If it was on the top, it wouldn't do anything. When, when the floor went down, it would just hinge or in the middle. So you want it on the bottom, which is the tension side. We've been, uh, I don't know, people beat us up on this wire mesh thing, but we pour a solid five slump. You guys can see how we pour concrete. I and mean, we're not pouring really wet stuff. I want to say if you poured really wet, that wire would fall down, but we don't do that. So we don't have to chair the wire up because if we chaired the wire up, we wouldn't be able to wheelbarrow onto it. And uh, it's an other, other reasons we don't do it is cost. Another reason is it's a tripping hazard. So as long as we get our wire up like we are, I can show you, you step on it and it's still there right where we want it. I'll show you again. See that, guys? There's the wire. Proof in the pudding. I don't know what more to tell you guys there. Keep talking about the wire. I kind of like the extra comments from the wire mesh police because it helps the channel. Because we take good or bad comments, it definitely helps us. But that's all I got to say about the wire, guys, today. Everything's going good. Mike's. Uh, Bow floating it out. With our, we have a six foot bow float there. That's a big guy. And that flattens really nicely. You can see it doesn't close the concrete. You gotta go over it a couple times because it is a stiff slump. Being a nice five slump like that, it doesn't just close up like if it was like an eight or it had uh, a bunch of chemicals in it. We don't have a bunch of chemicals in here. Um, no plasticizer, very little plasticizer. They do put a little bit in it at the plant, but. We don't add extra super plasticizer or high range water reducers or any of that. We don't need that. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, because this is all the next load, so we don't have to worry about keeping it square. One thing we do, guys, we try to keep our first load square. You don't want to like run down the side of a building or something with this load here because that section will dry different when you're finishing it. You want to keep things square. That's not mine. Mine's hanging off me. Mike? Must be Mike's. I got mine hanging. But um, hope that makes sense, guys. Like I said, we keep it right across. Try to keep... When we're running low on that last truck, when we're emptying out that... We know that truck's almost empty. We try to keep it square. We don't, you know, send a bunch of barrels up the wall or something because then you got this weird cold joint right here. And we want, when we're finishing it, this will be, be our cold joint. But it won't be a cold joint. But that'll be our joint because this concrete will actually be a little bit ahead of this concrete because of our half hour delay here. But here's our next truck right on time. Perfect. So we're going to empty this one out. That's Kenny, right? Yeah, that's Kenny. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. We're going to wheel these corners because we can't reach the chute over there. So. That's what we're gonna do. Hopefully we got a decent slump here. Oh, that's nice. Love it, love it. Beautiful. See how tight that mud is, guys. That's good mud right there. It doesn't come flowing down there at 90 mile an hour. Honestly, if you pour it too wet, the stones separate from the cream probably seen that on YouTube where the stones are actually falling down and the cream pulls up to the top not good yep. pulling the wire pulling the wire pretty tight <laughs> you want to add? yeah we ought to wait because the last load did the same thing the first barrel looked super tight and then it, then it was nice yeah yeah
That's a nice five slump though, honestly. What's that? I said that last year and you picked on me. You were laughing at me. You were cracking up laughing. You're still picking on me. I still want to do that. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to... You know, it works good if you're ahead of it, but if you're trying to dig through the mud to pick it up, good luck. It's almost impossible. Where the potato rake, you can go right through the mud and pick the wire up. You can dig it right through. That thing works too, don't it? The old, uh, that's an old come along that we cut apart. <laughs> that's one of them uh, uh, gators. Yeah, the gator ones. Gator. We're going to fill it in right here on the sides and that side and then we'll just shoot the middle. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Help, help these guys. I can jump in there and push the wire down. Yeah, Dustin, don't walk on the wire. You're supposed to levitate, dude. My first day. I want to see you levitate to put this concrete down. Quit walking on the wire. I'm just picking, guys. Just having fun, that's all. Having fun. You shouldn't have so much fun. Hmm. <laughs> Biscuit throws a hmm in there. Just having some fun. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Don't get any better than that. <laughs> you gotta have fun on a Wednesday. Right. You gotta <laughs> exactly. Have fun. Exactly. Why do we have so much fun and get so much work done? Something's wrong with us. We're, We're weird. <laughs> We're definitely weird. Chris, you're the weirdest. <laughs> oh, hold on, let me get. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, yes. So, what are we going to do? Like an over under poll? Whether Chris will shave his beard or not? Is that what you want to do? In the comments, guys. In the comments. Let's see. Everybody that says he should shave it, and then who says he shouldn't, and then he's got to do whatever the comments, the most comments. How's that sound, Chris? You going to do it? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. You can't say maybe. If I throw that out on the video, you can't say maybe. You have to shave it. Well, what if they say no, and then I do it anyway? Well, that's all right. But you can't go the other way. If we get so many votes for you to shave Basically, it, you have to shave it. it. Yeah, you're shaving it now. You said it. Right. And I'm going to get a bunch of so comments now. Yes, I want to shave it. Oh, you want to <laughs> shave it? Maybe we'll shave it right on, on YouTube. How's that? We'll get Christy to shave it. And uh, I'll videotape it. Yeah, we'll shave it at the safety meeting. I let somebody besides the barber do it, it's not my wife, she might do it. Oh, come on. Tell her it's for YouTube, man. It's for It's for YouTube. Yeah, these two shaved their heads. When they had a few too many uh, cold ones one night. I'm jumping over here now. Biscuit? Okay. All right. Oh, look at that, look at that. All right, I gotta put this on a tripod. Stay with us, guys. Perfect. 
I'm going to play Black Hole Sun. That would have been funny. <laughs> Here comes the moon! Listen, potty mouth over there. Biscuit. Dude, potty mouthing. Old Dustin. I'll have to edit my video. Look how tall that stands. That's a tight slump. That's a tight slump. Back to the tripod. Biscuits digging out the doorway. This is what we use. We just have a two by with a notch cut out of it. And when you put it on there like that, if you dig it along, it kind of takes out that material right there. And it stays out of where the door seals. The door seals back here. It kind of stays out of there, but it gives you that little taper. So when the rain comes down and hits your door, it hits there and it runs out. Some people do it different. They dig it all out and leave like a channel down through there. Just preference. This is how we do it. It seems to work really good. Um, if you don't do it and you just leave it flat, you'll get water running under your door no matter what you do. So that's how we do it. Works good. Gonna mag it and then he's got an edger, he's gonna hit it with his edger afterwards. There goes our second truck, and he's out of here. You guys did a good job today from Circle T, everything went real smooth. And my little buddy Rotor over there. Hi, Ro. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. You a good boy, aren't you? Yes. A nice day, huh? We got some concrete in. It's a good day, huh, buddy? It's a good day, ain't it? It's a good day. <laughs> Here's my good boy. Knew the rain was coming and it came. So we cut, just covered up the doors. You can see the rain on the boards. It's just sprinkling right now, but that worked out pretty good. So now these guys are gonna, Mike and Chris are gonna wait on this floor. We're actually just gonna go out here drive right down the road about three houses and there's another one that we did a couple years ago we laid the blocks for it and we got to pour that um, we have to prep it today so me and biscuit and dustin are gonna go down there and row i know i got you buddy it's raining we'll go back we'll go down the road here all right ready road ready road ready road ready all right, it's starting to rain pretty good now. Oh yeah. Show you where this job is. Really pulling out of that one. There's that one. Oh yeah. Right where Biscuit just pulled over. That's the job. We're gonna let it let up a little bit here. 
but he was supposed to get a load of, uh, there it is. We dropped Kevin the Kubota off here yesterday. And uh, this is his garage. Like I said, we did this um, a couple years ago. So we're gonna prep that today. While it's raining, we'll be inside here. Okay guys, we're back here the next day. We are forming up the apron. He wants a four foot by uh, the width of the building, 24 foot apron. So this is what we're doing. It's been raining all day today as it was yesterday, but just trying to keep moving here. So Chris and Biscuit are in here. They got a string line trying to get this nice and straight using a laser to set elevation. We're gonna have a pitch to it. Here's the floor guys. It's all cut, it's washed, it's just gotta dry and then we're gonna put a sealer on it. Got the sealer, I always brush these doorways, put a broom finish on them. They tend to do better in our climate, our uh, freeze thaws that we get here in central New York. Chris and Mike did a good job on this floor. It's all hand finished, so it's not super slippery. It's not like polished up where it turns black. We don't like to do that with uh, garage floors or pole barns. Sometimes you can't, you have to because it's so hot out, but if it's cooler and we can put a hand finish on it, that's what we like to do. But they cut it here, here, and once down the middle, everything's cleaned up. Like I said, we'll seal it. We just gotta let it dry out before we can seal it. I got a um, water-based cure to seal. I'll show you what that looks like. And we're gonna spray it on today. We got a backpack sprayer made by DeWalt. All right, guys, this is ready. Um, we did change a little bit. We, I ended up putting more pitch on it because there's just such a drop out of here going down here and then it goes up the hill. So to blend it into his driveway, we dropped it down to an inch and a half pitch from here. And we're gonna stay a half inch lower than uh, the edge of his garage floor right there and then it's got an inch and a half pitch so and it's still it's pretty gradual but you wouldn't want to go much more than that it would get kind of funky but he'll need just a little more stone here once this is poured and he can it'll be a smooth transition up into there so uh i'm just gonna wait on that floor to dry till tomorrow we're gonna be right down the road here pouring um, that other floor that we're working on so we'll, we'll pop over here this will be dry i'll make sure nobody gets in there today any footprints and then we'll seal that and then this job and then we'll try we're gonna try to pour this tomorrow when we pour the one down the street but it's supposed to be really wet and rainy so i'm not sure if we'll pull it off um this has to have air entrainment in it full air entrainment we do partial air entrainment in our pole barns because it gets cold in new york where we're at and these exterior ones, um, we like to put a broom finish on it. You don't want to seal them up with a hard trowel finish. They'll tend to pop. The stones will tend to pop on the surface. Same thing if you don't put the air entrainment in it. It creates micro bubbles in the concrete that you don't really see. But you don't want to seal those micro bubbles off. You want to leave them open. So a broom finish is about the best way to do that. And then you won't get those uh, that spalding that you see on some concretes where it pops. Did you cut that? Yeah. Ooh, biscuit. My first cut was not super nice, but that looks pretty. Quick. That looks pretty good. Went in tolerance, I'd say for sure. Biscuit's debut on the soft cut saw. Is it running? Is it running any butter? Is it still spitting and sputtering? Oh, was it? It's been spitting and sputtering a little bit. I was gonna. I was gonna give it to Daryl to tune it up, but. If it's wrong good, we won't worry about it. We, we clean the air filter out. Maybe that was the problem. Okay, guys, that wraps this project up. We just uh, pulled our form off the apron. Everything's sealed and cut. And that's how she turned out. Customer's super happy. Um, we just cleaned up the one down the road here, just down the street. That'll be in another video. We poured that one. We just cut that kind of worked out good having uh these two jobs right close together we're able to get them both done this week so and we're still in the, we're still in the middle of april so 
And this is how we leave these. They're a little bit grippy, guys, so that you don't slip. That's a hand finish. We use a trowel on that at the end. We power trowel it, and then we, we uh, hand finish it at the end on these garages. So they do look a little bit, they could be smoother, but that's not good because if you polish them up so they turn black, they're real slippery. But in the summertime, when the sun's beating on it, it's hard not to get it too slippery. But um, in the spring and fall, we can give a nice finish. And uh, I like that finish better and the customer does too. And then this is all broomed. Chris did that and put joiner edges in it the other day. So that turned out really good. Circle T worked with us and gave us, uh, they didn't charge us a short load fee on uh, this two yards of concrete here. So um, if you like this stuff, guys, hit the like button. Leave me a mean comment or a good comment, either one, comment to comment. And uh, I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.